So this video is about making this dress. It was going to be about another dress too, but that footage just disappeared. I edited it and everything and it just vanished. So um, this one, yay, pretty. Very, very, very simple concept, which you can do a lot with, which is kind of cool. So, annoyingly, the cutest ones, the linen ones, are off with my sister. I don't even have pictures of them, I don't think. But mine, that I just made, is two long rectangles, armpits cut out, straps cut out of straight piece of not even bias fabric, front placket, and back placket. And that's the simplest approach. And the linen ones are actually like calf length, but I wanted mine longer. And then... I added button placket and lace and then drawstring. Drawstring makes things shorter. Keep that in mind with yours. Shorter is fine, it's just something you have to take into account. And then the other one, the one my kidlet has, it's the fancy cake approach with bigger rectangles as you go down so you don't have quite so much together into plackets up here. And that's it. Like, it really is simple. And so I just keep experimenting with how can we do this differently? What kind of different looks can we get? And then I lose footage. So now that I've made, what, five different versions of this sundress for other people, I've decided I want one. So yay, deliberately plus size. And we're doing lace, just like with the last one, except this one is... Removing lace from one article of clothing that I bought when I was a teenager and was never able to fit into. And so now it gets a new life. And it's actually a similar design to what it was. Here, this, look how pretty the points are. There, and you see those little pin tucks after my own heart. So that's what they look like on the inside. That is how much fabric they crunched into it. I will be crunching more. And then on the front anyway, it's layered lace. It's that and this together. And also the excuse to add beads. So I'm going to finish getting the lace off this and then we'll move into rectangles world. Opal, Opal, are you helpful? <gasps> Pippin, both the babies. Hey baby. Pippin, where are you going to do my dress? Did I, you already put hay on it. What is this nonsense? All right, now we have a tube with an approximately 80 inch what do you call that thing? Circumference, because I went selvage to selvage and I was able to just be lazy about the edges and not fold them under because I don't have anything loose, right? I did fold under, double fold the hem, which is a very unexciting hem on a very unexciting tube. And then I went back to the piece of fabric in question, cut out a strip that wide folded it in half, put stitches there because we know I don't mind um, visible stitching and that means it doesn't get to slip around on me when I'm not paying attention. I held up a piece of lace to the front of me and said, oh good, that wide, and sewed it on to the folded in half thing. I used white thread. I think that was a bad call. I think I'm about to pick out all the white threads and use crap where is it this other thread that I have rather a lot of that's I mean off-white in a green direction but off-white is the important part because that's what I used down here and it's less visible because we know I want the pointy parts on the front right we'll worry about tacking them down later then the back I just guesstimated of course um it's narrower than the front because I think that keeps straps from falling off the shoulders. So next up is, well, replacing that 
thread or not and then cutting out each of these plackets and minus okay up at the top minus an armpit hole gathering the back into the back one and the front into the front one just connecting it Hmm. Come here, you. Darn it. This is not a slippery fabric. It's supposed to be a silk. It might actually be one. Just gathering it and stitching through the maybe silk and the lace and the gathered bits all together. Bunnies. Bunnies. What are we doing? We're licking ourselves. Their cats. Anyway, um, if we're keeping track, that's the amount of armhole I cut out for myself. Being completely arbitrary about it, but um, just for reference, in case it hangs how you like or don't like, and you want to make yours uh, deeper and narrower, or like this, or smaller. So I lied about the gathering, as usual, but the no, well, I started on the back, because that seemed the less intimidating option. And then I realized there was such a gulf between the amount of fabric I was trying to gather into this and the length of this that I went with, I don't know, like, sack back Watteau pleats. <laughs> And it'll probably be real pretty, and it's an amazing way of condensing fabric down to nothing. So that's awesome. And right now it's just sewn to this side. I'm going to go around the other side and tack that down in a minute. Making more steps for myself, but making it seem easier. That matters. Alright, again, in the spirit of breaking things into manageable parts. Um, I'm carefully sewing the far corners to the far corners, sewing the middle to the middle, and then going, oh my goodness, I need to stuff all this into there. So I think my plan will be to sew those down and then do something like that. And then there'll be a box pleat um, somewhere here. Like, it doesn't make sense with the shape of the lace. It's not lace, is it? It's net. What is this? Embroidered net? That's cool, because that means I could make my own for other projects, because I'm completely in love with this. But I think I'm not going to worry about the shape of the net triangles. I'm just going to make boob box pleats and proceed with my life and then sew them to the net triangles. You know it's funny because one of my favorite details about that shirt was how it was using little bitty pin tucks sewed all the way down the lace on the back side. And I mean, that just seemed like such a lovely detail, but I'm going to have to use it elsewhere because what I did this time with this was, look, I'm just sewing real, well, big pleats and real shallow, like just to the very front of the silk, see? Which means that this is a weak spot. I ought to reinforce it, but I think it'll give me more wiggle room. It'll let things open up under the lace, which will mean that I can make the lace fall lower on me, which is probably a good thing. Maybe. No idea. Man, boobs are annoying. If I was a more cylindrical shape, like same size, but more cylindrical, then my plan would have worked just fine. As it is, the box pleats worked like box pleats do, but I didn't think it through because I put it on 
and this beautiful triangle just goes off to the side and I hate it precious I hate it so I'm going to um, cut through all these little stitches and these and I'm going to take and maybe leave for now leave this box pleat and just like invert this one make this one go from here so it can go and maybe this will stay where it belongs maybe we'll see also I think I think I want buttons up the front give it a little more something here I was already wanting a drawstring why am I complicating this the whole point is this oh it's such a simple nope nope not for me I want to add things and also I want to salvage this lace situation so I'm going to snip a bunch of threads and invert a pleat The central pleat goes like this and the one on so on either side go like this and if I'd done it like this originally then we'd be done now and that'd be lovely but I didn't and so now I really like the idea of the button placket down the middle in spite of the fact that that means I need to take a pair of scissors I'm not doing this on camera and cut straight down the middle of all this prettiness but yeah, I need to make sure I'm not cutting through anything I shouldn't be, like sequins. So again, not on camera, but I'll go about a hand span past, and that way our button placket will disappear into a drawstring down here and um this. I have this that was on the bottom of the shirt in question, and... And oh holy crap, I get to test my theory about embroidering over net in order to make matchy matchy lace, don't I? Ooh, I was I was not planning on jumping on that so soon. But I was gonna use this on the edge of pockets. Um might have enough. We'll see. Anyway, button placket somehow with rectangles of this and with this. Need to think about that probably should think about that before cutting into my new dress probably won't do that so I cut a long strip off of the dress fabric and I sewed it in half so I wouldn't have to keep the edges lined up and then I sewed the net to it on either side see with it folded over on one side and then the buttons can go here maybe we'll see but um hmm Oh, sewed the net to it, and then I was looking at the embroidery on the original net, and it's actually really simple. So we are doing something really simple, just squiggles, yay squiggles, approximately three million squiggles. And once I get that part done, then I can cut out the slit for button placketing and sew this on it, and then we can worry about sewing wait a second there we go sewing beads to it and sewing on any sequins that fell off when I cut the slit and also sewing buttons to it and button holes and um, oh crap then there's a drawstring and maybe a pocket depending I'd kind of like this to be the top for a pocket too but I don't know how much I'll have for that since we're playing it all by ear Oh, she's beautiful little fuzzy wuzzy. Yes, she is. She's a beautiful little fuzzy wuzzy. Also, vertical slit buttonholes, which are not usually my jam, but are the only thing that made sense with the net being so close to where I needed the buttons to go. Kind of messy, no surprise there. 
We'll do the beads and sequins in a little bit. Where is that? Look, it's a tiny Topo Chico lid with the sequins and beads I cut off. I'll add more beads. So, bead and needles come in two flavors that I know of. The, let's see, see how that has a really long, narrow hole in it? So, annoying to thread, very useful, fits almost all beads, but and durable. This one, Frigili, very easy to thread, fits all beads, because you see how it collapses? But eventually that tip breaks. So, those are a couple options, and I, what am I trying to do? Because my embroidery is bigger and sloppier, because I didn't do all the loopties. Are the loopties more of like a thing that's easier to do for, there we go, um, for sewing machines, do you think, easier than by hand? So, sequins are delightful. I think I love them. There we go. And come here, sequin. See? If you do a sequin and a bead and then go back through the sequin again, then that's how they did it on the lace originally, and then you don't have a line of thread across the sequin. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, my embroidery is bigger and sloppier. Oh, it doesn't have the loopties. And so without the loopties, I'm trying to get things to integrate. And that seems likely to be a beads thing. Just random application of beads because I'm incapable of being systematic. Play to our own strengths, yes? There we go. So, well, do a few beads down here. See? So it'll at least sparkle a bit. Then I added more beads up here in the random different colors since all these are the same. And. What else? Oh, yeah. Sewed off the straps, because I don't want bows on my shoulders. And started applying a drawstring. Next up, sewing two little eyelets and sticking the ropey through. And then sewing down the other side. And then I'll have a defined waist. I'm kind of in love with this. I mean, it's really messy in some ways, but also making me very happy. Beads make me very happy. Sequins make me very happy, which, considering they're tiny nothings of plastic, is confusing. Mismatched buttons are awesome. I do wish I'd held the net back just a little bit at the top here, so that the green could continue in a, like, uninterrupted L shape. But I don't dislike it enough to redo it. The stitching on the inside is a highly visible mess, but if you're on that side of my dress, we have a problem. So, um, yee, I love it so much, it's so sparkly. So, I sewed on a drawstring channel with my usual level of grace and precision, especially considering this fabric is impossible to find straight lines on, and I braided some yarn for the drawstring itself, and again, grace and precision, made little eyelets for the drawstring to stick out. So now I'm going to go try the thing on and see if I need to redo the drawstring channel. The old jerk faces say I look pretty. Actually, the drawstring makes it just a little shorter than I was aiming for, because pulling it in makes it go up. But, you know what? I love it anyway. I think we're rolling with this. Next up, seeing the dress. So, I mean, it just kind of looks a little belted without me having to find a belt. All I have to do is tie a bow, which is awesome. Um, most of the dresses I've made with this 
concept are off with my sister for the foreseeable. Um, but there's one, one that Ocean has that we still have around. So that one and then this one. Yay, pretty. So mine and the other one are one tube, and this is four tubes, getting bigger as you go down. And that way, it's the same incredibly simple concept, and you don't have quite all that floof at the top. Lace at the bottom of tier three, lace at the neckline just like mine. Giant pockets that got lace because we had enough in her case. Twirl again, my love. <laughs>